All right, day three of day trading in Samar in, in the Caribbean. Today, a little bit of a rainy day. We've been having these bursts of rain shower and then it kind of clears out for a little bit. Uh, the last couple of days has been beautiful, super sunny. It's been great, but today a little cloudy. So that's fine. I, you know, I can't go to the beach just yet. So spending a little extra time on my computer at the trading station. And so I was actually going through a bunch of comments on YouTube and getting caught up. So thank you guys who comment on the videos and, um, you know, who ask questions because I, I love answering your questions. But what I think I want to do is when I get back next week, uh, maybe, well, I'm not sure what day and I'm not sure what time, but I was thinking I would do a live class for you guys where I just answer all the questions that you guys have and kind of go over what my system is right now for how I'm finding the stocks I'm trading, how I'm anticipating which ones are gonna make big moves and which ones are gonna, you know, maybe be more likely to stall out, where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out. So if you guys wanna attend that class, what I want you to do is fill out a survey of what is the best time for you. So I put down a couple different times so that look, all of them would work for me, I could do any of them and I'll let you guys tell me which one you like. And then everyone, um, I'll just email you the most popular choice and that'll be when we teach the class. So it'll be next week, probably uh, midweek, Wednesday or Thursday is what I'm thinking. So anyways, I put a link in the description where you guys can uh, put in your email address and you'll fill out the survey and then we'll email you whichever date is the most popular and then you'll be able to attend the live class. So that's gonna be at some point next week. Clearly the market is hot. I sat down this morning again, you know, pretty early and well, the, you know, the, cause I, like I said, I'm an hour ahead of uh, East Eastern standard time here. So uh, I'm getting up a little earlier, the sun's rising and you know, some sort of awake at around five, five, five thirty Eastern standard time. So I pull up the scans on my phone and right away I see there's two stocks up over hundred percent pretty early. So I was like, okay, We've got some momentum. Now, today was interesting because um, it wasn't quite as strong as it was yesterday or the day before, at least for the morning session so far, but still more than enough opportunity to capture some profit. So congratulations for those of you guys that got green. I'm gonna jump onto the computer screen. We're gonna start breaking down the trades that I took today. Uh, I, I think I traded four or maybe five stocks and I'm green on four out of the five. I have one that I've read on, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer, I, but much better yesterday, I suppose, in terms of accuracy. Yesterday, I traded like 14 different stocks, green on eight, red on six. So today, kept it a little bit more dialed in, just traded the smaller number of stocks, but did fairly well. So uh, so yeah, let, let's go with, jump on the computer screen and start breaking down the trades from today. Okay, so leading gainer today, or leading gapper was MOTS. This gapped up 160%, and it, it's a pretty impressive move. It went from a low of all around 95 cents or so up to um, over a dollar 85 that was uh, just that pre-market move right there yesterday it was at about 63 cents the problem with it is that it was very thickly traded it's got 45 million shares of volume and despite showing a 500,000 share float the level two doesn't make it feel like it's a 500,000 share float it's very thickly traded so on this one I made the decision pretty early on that I wasn't going to trade it. I just really felt like, you know, this one's going to churn commissions. I'm going to spend a lot of money in commissions on it to buy five, 10,000 shares, 20,000 shares. And I'm probably only going to get two or three cents on the winners. It, it's just not worth it. So for me, even mm -hmm. though there were a couple of opportunities on it that in hindsight, you know, could have worked well, I was watching it over $1.25 right here. That ended up going nicely up to $1.48. Then from $1.48, it pulled back, squeezed up to $1.65. Break 65 goes a little higher. So, you know, it did it did behave fairly well um, off of ascending support levels at least. But anyways, no trades on that one for me. Uh, my biggest winner today was actually on Seed, S-E-E-D. This is a stock I'm very familiar with. I've traded it over the years. Uh, the thing is, when I first saw it pop up, I was like, nah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm interested in this one. Because over the years, even though you might see some high volume days, it never really does anything that exciting. It kind of pops up and sells off. It's a little choppy. 2021 it had a period where, you know, it was in play. 
but this stock really has been around for a long time. Uh, you know, if we get dialed in again, you, you'll, you'll see some big green days off the lows where it pops up, but I, I wasn't that excited about it. And there were sort of two issues. It hit the scanner and I was like, okay, seed 5.4 million share float. No issue with the float. The float's fine. Um, but I pull up the level two and I noticed that it was easy to borrow. So I saw that right there on Lightspeed E, easy to borrow. And pretty much immediately that made me think that uh, this one's probably going to be a bit more of a grinder, a little choppier. Early short sellers, it, because it's easy to borrow, will short it more readily. It wasn't on short sale restriction when it first started moving. It was uh, sort of popped up, dropped down. And in fact, it did nearly a full retracement. It popped up right here from 276 up to 455. And then it drops back down to three. And then it curls back up here and it did an ABCD pattern. And on the break of that uh, level right there of about 440, that's where I got a nice trade on the move up to 526. So I didn't take big size on it. I really wasn't super confident on it, but I got a couple trades and hey, 2800, that's not too bad. So that was the one that I did the best on, uh, but it wasn't my first trade. My first trade was actually on SOGP. SOGP uh, earlier was at one point the biggest percentage gainer on the day. It gapped up 62%, but that's because coming into the open, it had already pulled back a bit. It had a pre-market high where at one point it was up over 100%. So if we back this one up, um, you'll see that this one kind of right at 630, it just started surging up. And I was sitting down pretty early. So let's back this up here for a second. So my first trade was at 656, um, where I bought it at uh, $6.78. So let's see, so that would have been, um, actually would have been on this candle right here. So, but, it, but I got in at 678. So 678 um, hits a high of 715, which was great. It drops down and then at 7 a.m. it comes up, it squeezes through 750. It pulls back and then it surges up to 799, which is a pretty good move. Again, trading it with relatively small size, not being super aggressive. The float on this one, um, it's 2.86 million shares. But again, interestingly, this one was easy to borrow. So I saw that and I just thought, hmm, easy to borrow. Does that mean, you know, shorts are just going to be more aggressive on it? because it's easier to short. And I think I think it does mean that. So, so I didn't want to push it unless it started to really, really open up and it never really started to open up in a big, big way. So I think the fact that um, both Seed and SOGP were easy to borrow certainly affected how much uh, they were able to go up. So it's interesting that the clearing firms allowed both of those to be easy to borrow considering they're both floats of under 10 million shares. But anyways, um, that was that. That's the case. So, uh, so that so SOGP and Seed were my first two trades. So I started the day in the green, uh, and that was great. I never went red today. Yesterday I went into the red before finishing green. Today just went right to the green. So that was a solid start uh, trading SOGP and Seed. And then I took a trade on VCIG. It hit the scanners, um, had some news in, involving AI in the headline, first AI-powered post-harvest robotic packing system. Uh, so I was like, okay, um, you know, this is a trendy headline. But I thought, well, let's see what it wants to do. I got in this um, at $1.92. It ends up going to a high of 235 I sold it for a very small profit, relatively speaking. But... Um, you know, green nonetheless. So I was like, all right, that's fine. And then I didn't take a single trade uh, for about an hour. So it's eight. that was 8 a.m. And then I didn't take any trades at 8.30. There was nothing I really liked. Didn't want to trade MOTS. And that became the one that was in focus. Some people were looking at HOLO. I felt like this one wasn't a good idea for me. I do like taking trades where you have this big sell-off and then the bounce off the low. I'm not as big of a fan of the slow curl. The bounce at this period is going to have high volume. There were a lot of people selling, shorting, and then bouncing, covering, buying. So there's a lot of volatility and there's a lot of volume. There's good liquidity. 
and you can get nice bounce off of the low. That's sort of the rubber band snapback setup where you get extended, then you snap back. This area here of slow consolidation and then curling is not really something I like as much. So the spreads are bigger, the liquidity isn't as great, and it's easier to catch a big loss. So it ends up going, which is nice, but I didn't want to trade that, so I didn't risk it. Um, so then at eight a or then at nine a.m., I took a trade on CPOP, and that's the one that I'm red on today. So CPOP, you know, I guess right idea, wrong timing. Uh, I took my trade on it right here. It popped up here, and I got in at 5.33 for the break of 5.40, and was looking for basically exactly what happened here, but it dropped down, and I stopped out. So, you know, it is what it is. Came back up, considered getting back in, but I was like, eh, I don't know. Lost on it once. I'm not sure I want to go back up to it. The thing is, it was gapping down on the day, and the reason it was gapping down was because it had such a big move yesterday, it closed high. So it's actually gapping down 30%. I, I knew that would probably be an issue, uh, but I still thought maybe we could bounce off the low. And I guess you could say, well, was this going to be like a curling setup? But because of the volatility on this stock, I, I, I sort of thought that it was going to bounce in a bigger way. But, you know, I didn't take the, the similar trade on Holo. I probably shouldn't have taken this trade. The spreads were tighter, which helped me mitigate risk somewhat but I still lost a bit more on it than I planned to. So I probably should have just left that one alone. Um, and then I took a trade on VTYX. VTYX hits the scanner, starts squeezing up. And initially I'm like, I'm not interested in it because the float's 44 million shares. But then I'm thinking about a stock that we had yesterday, which was um, uh, MNY that made a pretty big move, even though it also had a higher float. So I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a stab. So I jumped in it, uh, and I got a really high fill on my order. I was trying to get into the break of four. I ended up filling at 425. So that was quite a bit higher. It drops down on this candle to 477. Oh, sorry, 377. And I, it's 50 cent, 50 cent drop. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get out. So I got out at like 390 and 385 but I still ended up going red on that. And at that moment, I went from up four on the day to, uh, let's see, I, I was down 750 on CPOP, and then I was down uh, 2,600 on um, VTYX. So I was up about 800 on the day. And I kind of thought, oh man, you know, I really overstayed my welcome here. Should have just walked away. Uh, but then this ended up making a really nice move at the open. So I got back in, and we had a really nice five-minute pullback here, which I traded as well, and this got me back to up 3,500. So my my peak today was 4,000. I gave back 70% of it to up only 700, and then rallied back to up 3,500. And this is a place where I think it's okay to call it a day. Uh, uh, you know, it's also, I, I want to enjoy the day, and as soon as it stops raining, I've got some things I, I want to go do today. So, uh, hey, you know what? Another solid green day trading on the traveling trading station. And life is good, so really can't complain about anything at all. Uh, yes, today was a little slower than the previous um, few days we've had. We've been in a really nice um, hot streak. So, you know, yesterday, super solid day. Friday, super solid. So these are my first two days of trading in St. Martin. Today's day three. So I've already, you know, done great. And even if today was flat or 700 or slightly red, it's still fine. I don't usually feel good when I go on a trip. I trade the full week and I'm red. If I'm red the full week, then I feel kind of silly. Like, why did I even bother, right? I took time out of the trip and I got nothing for it. So for that reason, usually when I'm traveling, I will be a little bit more conservative, you know, just not to push it too hard, just be green and not, not to overstay my welcome. So today is a day where I'm kind of in the more traditional sense of a traveling day, getting green, gave back a little too much, probably should have walked away sooner, but I'm, I'm definitely walking away now. The previous days I was pushing it a little harder because things were pretty hot. Um, but this has been my month of February so far. I had a red day on the second day, 
But um, but aside from that, it's been really steady, and I'm a little bummed I missed this day traveling. But anyways, um, we'll be here this week, and then traveling on the weekend. So then next week I'll be uh, I'll be here all week. And yeah, next week I want to teach a class for you guys. So you can let me know in the survey um, below which day works best for you, and then based on popular demand, I'll just choose uh, that day and time for the class. Um, so anyway, so I'm looking forward to you guys giving me some feedback about what times are best for you, and then we'll uh, schedule accordingly for next week for a free class. Okay, so that's the game plan. Um, I'd say reminder, as always, trading is risky. My results aren't typical, so take it slow, manage your risk, practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line, and I'll see you guys back at it for my recap tomorrow. All right, see you guys in the morning.